Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to Livewire Church. Welcome all of you that are right here in our house. And then also want to welcome those of you that are joining us online. Thank you so much for being with us today. Wow, we just had over here, we just had, and I think we said this last week, we just had an incredible time of, uh, of worship. And again, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you're missing out if, uh, if you're not joining us on a Sunday morning, especially when you're here in Naples. If you're here in Naples, you're missing out because we just have an incredible time of worship and just uh, enjoying one another's fellowship and encouraging one another. So again, want to thank all of you for being with us today. want to thank all of you that are here. If this is your first time, whether you're online or you're here at our house location, uh, we definitely want to encourage you to fill out the Connect card. You can go to livewirechurch.com. Click on All Access Sundays and uh, fill out that Connect card and definitely want to invite you to do that. Also, when you click on All Access Sundays, you can get the message notes uh, for this morning. Definitely want to encourage you, if you don't have the LiveWire app, you can have all of that right at your fingertips, right on your mobile device. Get the LiveWire app from wherever you download your, your apps. We've got some awesome news. we got some pretty cool news that we want to share with everybody. If you haven't seen it on Facebook yet, or those of you that, again, that are joining us online, we've got some incredible news. We are opening up. Another house location in Bonita. Whoa. Bonita, we're coming for you, all right? We're coming for you, Bonita. And so if you know anybody at Bonita, you know anybody that lives in Bonita, uh, definitely want to encourage you to invite them to, to come on out. We're going to start opening, or we're going to open up that house. Uh, Tony and Elizabeth, uh, they have their house over there in Bonita Springs, along with my parents, and they're going to open up uh, their home, and, uh, and we're going to have a house church location over there. That's going to be Sunday, August 13th, that we're kicking that off. And so, again, you know anybody that lives in the Bonita, Bonita Springs area, invite them to come check it out. Again, all the information at livewirechurch.com. All of that is their location and uh, uh, directions and, and all of those things. So definitely want to encourage you to be praying about that as we uh, as we open up that next house. And there again, you might say, hey, you know what, man, I've got a house. I'd be willing to open up that. Man, that is real easy. All you got to do is say, hey, I want to open up my house. And all you have to do is invite a, a bunch of friends over, invite a few friends over, stream Facebook Live, and, uh, and there it is. You got a church right there in your home. And so we definitely want to invite you to do that if, uh, if that's something you'd like to do. Again, go to livewirechurch.com, connect with us, and, and we'll help you get started. We also have over here at the house, those of you that are online, you can't see this, but we have some really good friends, longtime friends of Christine and I, uh, way back in the day. Uh, but uh, a lot of you will remember Danny and Kim Mejia uh, that were missionaries many years ago. They came to the States, and then they went back uh, uh, about a year. It's been already a year, hasn't it? Uh, a year ago, they went back to uh, be missionaries once again and uh, over at Living Water Teaching. And, and for those of you that don't know, we as a church, we support them on a, on a monthly basis. And so when you invest in Livewire, you're investing, we always say this, you're investing in people, you're investing in life change. And friends, we're not just doing that right here in Naples. We're doing that in, uh, in, in Central America. We're doing that in other parts of the world. And, uh, and so, again, when you invest in Livewire and, and uh, just want to encourage you, uh, want to encourage you to consider investing. If you're not investing on a regular basis, number one, we give because our God is a giver. That's why we give. And number two, when you invest in this ministry, you invest in this church, you're investing in people, you're investing in what What's going on around the world you're also investing in the United States as we plant churches all around the world through the association of of uh geez related churches, related churches. thank you <laughs> like man how did that name escape me so definitely want to encourage you uh livewirechurch.com you can give through the website or if you're on Facebook live uh, actually on the top of our Facebook page you can click donate there uh, or if you have the app you can give that way as well but we are so thankful to have Danny and Kim spend some time with us and Daniela spend some time with us today and just to be able to share some time uh, with them uh, let me just say this um, again we support them on a regular basis and actually on our Facebook page uh, we just posted an update from Living Water Teaching, from Danny and Kim, some of the things that they've been doing, some of the summer mission trips that have been going on. Hundreds, thousands of people that heard the message, the, the seed was planted, hundreds that received the Lord. Again, that's where we, we've made that investment. We're, we're a part of that. We're a part of sowing into that. But let me encourage you. If you're not supporting these guys personally, let me encourage you to consider that, and uh, and you can talk to them afterwards, and you can give, uh, you can put a check in their hand, put some money in their hand, and uh, and bless them this morning. But again, thank you, Danny and Kim, for being with us uh, this morning. So, with all of that said, we want to get into the message, want to get into the word. Last week I shared this. Uh, we have a special guest with us, happens to be my brother, and uh, he's going to bring the word this morning. And so, Tony, why don't you come up and share the message? All right. 
Good morning, good morning. It's good to see all the beautiful faces out there and everybody online. I can't see you, but I can because uh, God's in us. So uh, just wanted to share a few things that's been on my heart that uh, God's really uh, just been dealing with me on. And I, I just know there's a, a truth that, that needs to be heard. It's his truth that needs to be heard. And uh, so many times we don't even realize it, but we wrap little lies or we just forget about the truth or should I say our first love. We forget our first love, and, and we sometimes need to get realigned back to that, our first love. And I just want to, uh, uh, those of you online, those of you that are here, um, you know, we should be praising God all day, every day. It, today is not the day to praise God, and you know, just for today. It's all day, every day. I just want to remind you guys of that, because it says in Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, that we come assembling together, we come to assemble together to do what? in love and good works, to stir each other up. We should already be coming excited and like, man, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, all the things that you're doing, no matter what's going on. So anyways, I have a, I have a, a hard message, but it's a truth message, and it's just realigning us back to him. And, uh, you know, it's going to be awesome. Holy Spirit, thank you. You're here. Everybody online, receive this word from God. All right, let's start. Matthew 6, 21, 6, 23. The title of this message um, it's behind me. You may be able to see it. You may not. I'll tap, tap into it later, but it's called the perspective of love. And sometimes we need a perspective shift. So Matthew 6, 21, 23, it reads, and this is Jesus uh, uh, speaking. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. <clears throat> but when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you have is actually darkness, how deep does that darkness go? That scripture, it, it, if you really dissect it, and we're going to dissect it a little bit here, but it's, it's talking about perspective. What are you looking at with your eye? How are you perceiving things? Okay, and we're going to be talking about God's perspective, our perspective. So first thing, what are we treasuring? What are we treasuring in our lives? What is it? What do we treasure the most? Our jobs, our house, our family, right? We treasure, oh, my family, man, I love my kids, and nothing wrong with that. We can treasure, the, you know, we can treasure those things, right? Um, what else? You, you hear all the time, the pursuit of happiness, you know? Okay, what's, that? what's the pursuit of happiness without God, though? Honestly, what is in our heart? Out of the abundance of our heart, what happens? Our mouth speaks. So... If you pay attention to what's speaking coming out of your mouth, it'll give you a good idea what you're treasuring in your heart, you know? And maybe you're talking too much about the house. Maybe you're talking too much about that job. Maybe you're talking too much about this, that, the other, and maybe your kids are going astray and you're worrying so much about that and you're forgetting about your true love. You're forgetting about your true love. You're forgetting there's somebody there that's fighting for you, that's for you, okay? What are we speaking with our mouth? Is it life? Is it death? Are we speaking life into the situation or are we hearing bickering, complaining? Be honest with, your, with yourself. I'm looking at myself, I look at myself in the mirror and I have these conversations with myself. And I'm like, I want to see Jesus in those eyes. And I do see Jesus in those eyes. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. It's all you. But we have to be reminded of these things. You know, where your treasure is, the desires of your heart will also be. The eye is like a lamp that provides light. Man, that's so beautiful because it's all perspective. If we're seeing through his eyes, the world is different. If we see through our eyes, we may see some things a little different. We may see things that we think we have the right to say, but do we? Do you realize since we were little, we've been raised by the wisdom of the world? Do we realize that? Like honestly, think back as kids. We got baby Jackson, right? All right, baby Jackson, and he's growing and doing his thing, and he's a loving kid. He's a loving boy. Every day he's muscling. But anyways, uh, <laughs> that's only for the family. They'll get that. But baby Jackson is my nephew, right? He's my nephew? My nephew. So he's my nephew. He's my brother's, my brother's baby. And that's a whole other story. I can't get into it because I, we're on a time constraint, but maybe one day we'll get into that story. But the, the, the thing is, is... We have been raised by the wisdom of the world since we were little. <laughs> and Jackson is being raised in that wisdom right now. And one day he'll be needing what? Born again. One day he's going to come to that place where he needs to be born again. But guess what? 
There is sin. There is things by nature that he just does. So there's food there. And, she, and, and Jenny's telling him no. His mom is telling him no, you can't have this. No, you can't have this. And what's he do? Yeah. <laughs> and he's testing. Is mommy looking? Is mommy looking? You know? This, we don't, it's as small as that. We think that's nothing. Oh, that's just a baby, you know? No, it's the wisdom of the world since the fall of Adam and Eve. That has been how we've been trained up with everything. And we don't see it that way. We just see it as, oh, we're just living our life. We're just growing. And this is just what happens. And sometimes you go through this. Sometimes you go through that. I'm here to tell you, if you are a believer and you are born again, God died for so much more than us living that way. And I'm going to explain to you here shortly. But we've been raised by the wisdom of the world. And we have to, we have to acknowledge that. We have to see that, wow, along the way that we've been raised up, we've been believing lies about ourselves. How many times did you believe a lie in school that you're not the popular kid? That, you know, hey, you got to wear this shoe to be cool. You got to do, you got to be in with this crowd. You got to be... And, and the thing is, is I, I know I was a shy person, believe it or not. I would never be doing this, what I'm doing right now, back in when I was 14. So, so that, but what happened? I was raised by the wisdom of the world, thinking, oh, I was made this way. I'm shy. I'm an introvert. No, I'm born again. I got, I'm a child of God. And then when you get to that point where you're just like, wow, the confidence, you come boldly to the throne room. And he says, no, this is who you are. You, are, you can speak in front of people because it's not about you. It's about my children. You know, it's about him. Um, whew, sorry. But, so we believe these lies along the way. And it's like, we just think it's part of life. And, but man, if you're honest with yourself, we believe some lies. You know, my dad thinking that he's, only, he, he's never going to be good because his dad always told him, you're never going to be good. You're never going to do anything in this world. You're a bum. You're a loser. My mom raised the same exact way. And look at us today. Look at our family today. Why? Because God's got a plan. He's got a plan for you. You listening at home, he's got a plan for you. You're not a loser. You're not a has-been. Okay? Whose perspective are we living from? Is it Christ, our risen king, or is it our perspective? Is it our perspective? Come on, church, be honest. Be honest with you. You're only going to grow if you're honest with yourself. And you'll grow because you're looking to Him, not to you. Um, sorry. Whose perspective are we living from? Christ or ours? Just, just ponder that. Christ or ours. All right? If it's ours, you might be saying things like, if it's our perspective, let's be honest, you might be saying things like, Lord, how come I haven't gotten that, that uh, promotion at work? You know, what's going on here? You know, that boss, he never sees me. You know, I try to do things right and, you know, he just never sees me. He never sees what my value is. He never sees that I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that. What are we doing? Are we working for the boss? Or are we working for the Lord? He says in Colossians that we do all things unto him. Unto him. Do we, are, we ta are we taking that broom and that mop and are we, oh, the boss is coming. Let me, let me sweep real quick. So we can look good in front of him, in front of man? So we can try to get that promotion? Again, be honest with you. I have to be honest with myself. I've done those things. I've done those things because I was looking for approval with man. But that's the wrong perspective to be living from. Because if we're doing it from the audience of one, from God's perspective, He sees everything that we see. Every thought that comes through our mind, He sees it all. So what a place to walk with when you're walking with the Lord and you're just like knowing He's looking at everything you're seeing. Our eyes, our mind, it's a theater room to him. Like, he's just like, wow. Look up, up, up. And I like to look at it that way because we think we're hiding from God. You see Adam and Eve, and he, they, they, they ate of the fruit, and they're like, oh, right away, get the leaves. Oh, man, I got to cover up. What's going on here? And, and, and God's like, where are you? What happened? You know? And, and they're running away. Why? Immediately, guilt and shame came in. Fall of man, sin. Guilt and shame. You know, and sometimes we do that in our life. We walk around with guilt and shame that we've been carrying since we were little, since our, whenever we were growing up and whatever we went through in our life. You know, God's got so much more for us. He wants us to live not out of that perspective. That perspective there, 
of bickering and complaining. Did Jesus bicker? Did he complain? Let's just be, let's just be honest. I got to be honest with myself, you know, and I'm complaining about this person. I mean, are we, are we going through that light? Are we looking for God for the blessings? Do we come to Christ for blessings and favor? I mean, those are great. Don't get me wrong. I'm, don't hear what I'm not saying. Those are great when they come. But are we a Christian because of that? Come on. Church, we need to wake up. There's, there's so much more in life with Christ. And it's so much greater than the blessings, than the favor, than catching five green lights in a row. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's so much more to life than that. Every time you get a green light, somebody else has a red light. Have you thought of that? So when you got your five green lights, somebody else got five red lights. Okay? Let's put others in front of us. We always want to rush, 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 and it's about me, and it's about... That's our perspective. We got to die to ourselves. Stop living from our perspective. Okay? Um, so we go, through, we go through life, and we, we're just raised by the wisdom of the world, and we become believers. And what happens sometimes is we're thinking we, 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 we accept Christ, and we're like, man, everything's going to be great from here on out. But that only happens, it says, by the renewing of your mind. Not conforming to the world, so not conforming to the ways you were raised by the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So how do we do that? How do we renew our mind? Probably a change of perspective. Probably no longer living for yourself or looking through life through your eyes, but His. Let's read in Colossians, uh, Paul, right? Yeah, Paul. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Online, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, uh, New American Standard on this particular one. But it says, Therefore, if you have been risen up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Okay? So again, if we're raised up in Christ, I'm speaking to the believers right now. I'm speaking to the believers because if we are raised in Christ, are we being kingdom-minded? Are we actually putting Christ first? Are we actually thinking about the Lord? Or are we worried about the things here? Are we worried about having a good life here? Are we worried about that next blessing? Or, you know, getting the house, getting the car, getting this, getting that. Are we? Those things are good, but not at the cost of Christ. He gave up His life. And he gave it to us to remove sin, which was awesome. But what more did he do than just removing your sin? He removed the sin of the world. But more important, just as important as that, he restored our relationship back to the Father. He restored relationship back to the Father. The same way Adam and Eve walked in the cool of the day and communed with the Father, we now have access to that. We have that same exact access. He says, walk in the light as He is in the light. Are we doing those things? We need to change our perspective. Believers, I'm talking to you. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. He will lead us. Christ will lead us through it. God is our Father. Thank you, Father God, that we have given our life to you. Thank you, Lord. Father, man, wow. That song is just wrecking me. His love, his, that love, his love is amazing. P ponder on that. His love is amazing. His love. If we only can get an ounce of that, we would be <laughs> laid out. His love is amazing. We were created in his image. His image, his likeness. We were created in His image and likeness. Why are we holding on to our life? It's never our life in the beginning or in, our, in the first place. It's His, right? Man, we are created in His image. I, 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 can't, I can't help but to think. It's like we think we're, we're this the way we are. and We're, you know, having to, you know, live up to people's expectations and all this. And God's saying, no, you're already right where I have you. You are made in my image. And likeness. Wow, like think about that, guys. We're made in His image and likeness. That's a beautiful thing. There's nothing that we have to do. We have this thing about doing for God. And He says, no, just be who I created you to be. 
Just be. Because if we do that being, guess what happens automatically? The doing. The doing of works. Why? Because we become love. We become love. Who's love? God is. God is love. Don't worry, I'm not spanking you. This is an encouraging word because this is exciting. This is, this is something that I think we forget because we're in this world. But remember, he said we're in it, but we're not of it. So we can live in it, but what it, what's cool is he wants us to live from that perspective of knowing him through it. Are we just going to work just for work's sake? Are we driving our car just to drive the car? Are we raising our kids just to raise kids? Or is Christ in the midst of that every single time? He should be. Whew. Sorry, I need to drink water. Time out. Sorry about that online. I went a little there. But we are created in His image. We are created in His image and likeness. Let's stop incorporating Jesus into our life. No, He becomes our life. He becomes our very existence. He becomes our life. We no longer incorporate Him just to say, Oh yeah, we have Jesus here for, for this. We have Him for that. We come on Sundays. We come on Wednesdays. Whatever. No, He actually becomes your life. And He says, what is eternal life? It's to know Him. It's to know the Father, right? We've been born again, right? What have we been born again from? We talked about this on my previous message about being renewing to, by, be, by the renewing of our mind. We've been transformed, right? So that's why we've been born again. We haven't been born again if we keep living our old life. I'm just being honest. If we're living with the same thoughts and we're living with the same, uh, 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 um, what's the drive to go after this and go after that, it's like we're not... We're not putting Christ first. What did he say? He said, deny yourself, right? Pick up your cross and follow me. If we are born again, let's, let's remember that. Like, what does that look like? He just wants us to walk like him. And, you know, I hear this all the time. Yeah, brother, but, you know, I'm not perfect, and I'm not this, and I'm not that. We're made in his image. Christ died for us. He wouldn't, say that thing. he wouldn't say that if it wasn't real. He died for us, and now He lives for us. We're made in His image. It says, walk in the light as He is in the light. If you connect those dots, He's saying there's a place of total freedom. There's a place of total rest. There's a place where you're just in Him, and no matter the storm, you're going to get through it. It doesn't matter. Look at Paul. He's in jail, in prison, hunched over, writing the stuff that we get to read and get encouraged by. And he was in prison. What if he didn't do that because he didn't feel like it? Because, Lord, how come you're not getting me out of this mess? You know? Let's just punch out the clock and, oh, Lord, I can't do no more. Sorry. This is as far as I can go. Man, thank God Paul stood on to that endurance of this race, man. And we get to read those words and be like, wow, you know? Why is he saying those things? He's saying those things to us, so to remind us who we are in Christ, you know? Out with the old, in with the new. Do we believe that? He says, all, all things have become new. So when we're born again, all things have become new. Your mind, your heart. My wife always shares this. She pictures Jesus just scooping in your heart and just scooping out all your junk. Everything that you were raised with and just scoops it all out. And throws it out. And it's like, no, you're created in my image. You're my child, and I love you. Jesus became what we were, which was sin, so that we could become what he is, a son filled with life. You are a child of God. You have been predestined before the foundations of the earth. Think about it. If we have been predestined, we have... He already knew us before we were born, before we were the little spermie going up to the egg. He knew us. You know, that little sperm was going up. 80 million chances, right? Something like that, give or take. 80 million chances. Boom. I could take my time and go. Why? Everybody could be up there hammering away, trying to get in the egg. But there was only one that was predestined in that particular moment and in that particular time. So whether you were adopted whether you were thrown out, whether somebody picked you up out of a trash can, a basket, or whatever, it doesn't matter. You were predestined before the foundations of the earth, and God has a plan for you. 
You have been made in his image. You are a child of God. Don't let the wisdom of the world tell you otherwise. Tell you that you're a statistic. Tell you that you're this. Nobody wanted you. No, that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> the commercial, Facebook, <laughs> the wall. Yeah, okay, it went over your heads. No. <laughs> but, uh, but honestly, wow, wow. If we would just take a step back and get out of our own little bubble and out of our own little world, and we would see how Christ sees us and have His perspective, we would see that we're made in His image, and we would see that we're a child of God, and we would see that there's nothing, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. We would see and believe those things, and we would not go back to our old life. We would not go back to the old mindset. We will not go back to those things. Why? Because we've been born again, and He's... He already predestined us, and yes, I have so much more for you. So much more for you. John, 1 John 1, 7 says, walk in the light. I already mentioned this, but I want to say the scripture. It's 1 John 1, 7. Walk in the light as he is in the light, right? Man, that's beautiful because it, it, it makes you, it, it, it tells you right there, walk in the light as he is in the light. Okay, so those of you who say, oh, I'm not perfect, brother. Yeah, but Christ in you is. Christ in you is. You're not perfect, yes. But do you have Christ living in you? Holy Spirit, yes. He says, stay because the comforter is going to come. It's one of the main reasons we get baptized. That outward expression of the inward choice of saying, Lord, I'm yours. I no longer want my life. I want yours. And it's that outward expression saying, I die to myself and I'm risen in you. Holy Spirit, you are one. Lord, we're one. Father, I'm reconnected with you because of your son. That's beautiful. That's good news. That's the gospel. That is beautiful. It says, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even going with the note. The truth sets you free. The truth is what sets you free. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Do you believe it? I am the way. He's not some kind of a way. He's not just a little bit of a truth. You know, he's not just this part of your life. No, He is the way. He's the truth. He is the life. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Let's grab a hold of that. Like, what is that expression? Grab the bull by the horns? Man, that's the world's expression. Let go of the horns and just praise God. And just be like, thank you, Lord, that you died for me. And now you, you have risen so that I can rise with you. I can walk in the light as you're in the light. I no longer have to go to work bickering and complaining and saying, why haven't I gotten this raise? Why hasn't this turned out for me? Why hasn't that turned out for me? No, I could just say, thank you, Lord, for this job. Thank you, Lord, that even though uh, the boss doesn't see me, you see me. And I'm doing it unto you, Father God. Thank Thank you, Lord, that you love me. Thank you that I don't need man's approval for anything. You have already accepted me because I was predestined. Because you already knew me before I was in my mother's womb. And you already have a plan for me. And you are my joy. I'm reminded, uh, you know, we've been, paid, we've been paid in full, completely redeemed by the blood of Christ, right? We know that. We see it. We sing songs about it. This is what I'm talking about. We sing songs and we get into it and, and then we live life. You know? Incorporating Christ when we need Him, when a problem arises or this, that, the other issues. You're no longer defined, people online, you're no longer defined by your problems or your issues. You're not. You're not. It's not about your problems. It's not about your issues. It's not about your... Cancel your subscription to issues and problems. <laughs> and, 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 and sign on to the life-giving message of Christ and He's in you. And just know that I don't have issues. I don't have problems. You have an answer. You have an answer, and his name is Jesus Christ, and he loves you with all his heart. He is the epitome of love. He is love. God is love. And this is the best part, man. Even when we don't get it and, and, and we stray away, I've strayed away. Many, many years I strayed away. You know, knowing the truth, I strayed away and did what? My own thing. Did my own life. Did, oh, Lord, I got this figured out. Let me just do my thing. You know, it wasn't until about, and it was off and on, but really the last three years, it's last two to three years, it's just been, nobody's going to tell me different. How about that? I'm going to live my life. I'm encouraging you guys with this word right now because that's what we're supposed to do. Encourage one another in love and good words. And that's all I'm doing. Whether you take this message and take it personally and have the Holy Spirit convict you and comfort you, that's on you. 
It's not, it's not up to me. That's God's job. I don't have to do that. I'm just doing my part, encouraging the one another, encouraging the believers to fight the good fight of faith. It's a race of endurance, and there's a better way than the way we're doing it, bickering, complaining along the way, but saying, praise God, holy is the Lamb. Just being honest. We praise it all the time. We come to church, and we, we worship Him and worship Him, but then a problem happens, and it's like, where'd God go? Where, was it His problem? fault you got a red light was it really man life is so much more than that life is so much more let's stop incorporating him and no we become him we become love we become the christ that's in us we start imitators christian little christ-like ones right imitate christ can we honestly say we imitate christ all the time i know i haven't but man these last two and a half years man that's my heart's desire and there's nobody that's going to tell me otherwise. They start persecuting me, say, yeah, but Tone, nobody believes in healing no more. Hey, but Tone, nobody, da, da, da. Sorry, you're not going to tell me otherwise. I got the spirit of the living God in me, and I know what the truth is. He was persecuted first. We'll be persecuted. So it's okay. If you don't want to take the message, it's all right. But I'm telling you, he's got a plan for you, and he loves you. He loves you more than you would know. 1 John 3, 16. You know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for for us. So we ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters, right? Did you know that the word, uh, this is just coming to me, I had wrote it down, but the word repent, a lot of times we say that word repent to turn back to God. But in the New Testament, the Greek word of that word repent, a lot of times, I can't remember what the percentage, but most of the times the word repent is actually a, a Greek word, uh, mena, I forgot how to say it, menetanoa, menetanoa, which actually means change the way you think. It's amazing. Change the way you think. So when John the Baptist is there and he's going, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Change the way you think for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is here. Change the way you think. Change the way the world has raised you. Change. It goes back to the Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? I'm sorry, was there at five minutes yet? We were? Oh, sorry. Oh, we're good. Ooh, we're doing good. Thank you, Lord. Woo, woo. We can keep going with the Holy Spirit fire. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but the Greek word means change the way you think. I think that's awesome. I think that's really awesome because change the way you think. He's saying repent. Change the way you've always thought before. The way you thought before was when you were not saved. Then you were born again. Now you think like what? The mind of Christ. We're called the body of Christ, right? Isn't that something? We're the body of Christ as one mind and one accord. And we are told to put on the mind of Christ. It makes a full body. So if we would put on his mind, his perspective, we would live this fullness of life that I'm telling you guys is awesome. It's beautiful. Um, I want to go back up actually. I just feel he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. He's not kind of a way, he's not kind of the truth, he's not kind of the life. Unbelievers online, if you're out there and you say, yeah, but I've ran into a few of you Christians and you guys are hypocrites and you guys are this and you guys are that, I apologize. I apologize that the church hasn't done a great job all the time of becoming love and being Christ. I apologize for those. I apologize that because I knew I was one of those. I wasn't displaying Christ all the time. But I tell you what, Christ is love. And don't look to the man as, as, as your reasoning. Look to Christ as your answer and Christ only. We're not perfect, but Christ in us is perfect. And he is, he can perfect us. But I'm telling you believers, back to you believers, we have to start believing what he already gave us. It is not a 10 step program, guys. It is a one step program, Jesus. Out with the old, in with the new. I am born again of the spirit. I am with you, Lord. I have your perspective. I wanna come back to my true love. My true love, you, Lord. Not this house, not the kids, not the yard, not the car. None of that matters but you, Lord. He says that, and it's biblical. I'm not speaking out of turn here. It's biblical. He says, son will be against father, daughter against mother. He didn't say that because he was trying to be cute with it. He was being for real, meaning if you're a believer, be a believer. Don't turn your views just because your mother doesn't believe that or your dad doesn't believe that or your, your kids are wiling out. 
No. Are you going to focus on the issue of what's going on with your kids? Or are you going to stay steadfast with the word of God and know he's good. God's got him. You're going to stand on Christ, right? One of the things I want you to look at is the perspective of love needs to shift from our love and how we see things and see it through God's eyes. His perspective is so much different. Let me see if I could do this. But if you can see the background, um, yeah, it's kind of there. It may go. But there's a daisy back there. And Jesus is in the middle of that because he should be the center of our lives, right? And what's on that? What, what, we know the daisy as what? He loves me, he loves me not, right? That's our perspective. But look at God's perspective on it. He loves me, 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 he loves me. He's got a plan for you, he's got a plan for you, he's got a plan for you. You're risen in Christ, you are his, you're no longer lost in this world, but you're found, you're no longer blind, but you see it's his love, it's his love, his love. He has a plan and a destiny for your life, he loves you. You're the one that constantly say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. There's no but. There's a but God. He loves me. 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 And that's the perspective of love. We can live all day, every day. Thank you, Jesus, for that, Lord. That, you, we, that in 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. One of the things I'm reminded in 1 Corinthians, I got to wrap it up. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7. Love is patient and kind. But I love that the first one is patient. Because even when I didn't get it for the first 39 years of my life, he was patient. He was patient for me. He waited for me. He said, I got a plan for you, son. I got such a plan for you and you don't even know it. You don't even know what I have for you. And he's saying the very same thing to you guys. You might have disqualified you, but he has not. His love is patient, and it is awesome, and it is kind, and it is long-suffering, and you just keep reading the list in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 4 through 7. Wow. Let us be reminded, Matthew 6, to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. What's His righteousness? Jesus, right? Jesus died for us, put, gave us the robe of righteousness so that we can have communion with the Father now. And that's a beautiful thing. It really is. If you're an unbeliever right now and you're listening on to this message, and uh, I read, the truth came out. So I know it hit your heart. We had heart surgery today for the believer and the unbeliever. And God did his thing. And uh, there, there could have been conviction. And there will be comfort because that's what the Holy Spirit does. But right now, right there, where you're at, just say, Lord, I want that. I want the real you. I want not, not the 10-step program. I want the one-step program, Jesus. And all you say is, Jesus, I want you. I believe in you. That's it. That's it. And you are brand new. Old things are passed away. New things have, be all things have become new. That's it. You're a child of God. And the crazy thing about it, it might be new to you. But remember, you were predestined before the foundations of the earth. He already loved you. He already knew you would come to him. He was just waiting for you to see that you needed a Savior, that you needed His love, and that's it. Father God, I just pray for everyone here, Lord, that this message, like Josh would say, just that landing strip, that it would just land on their heart, Father God, and it would just make an impact. You know, it would just completely wipe out any false thoughts, false lies, false anything that was in our hearts before about, about our life, Lord. But that know that we are one in you, Lord, and it doesn't matter. If we... Stop focusing on the issues and the problems and start focusing on the answer, and the answer is Christ. And that's it. If we would just focus on you, Lord, the answer of Christ, all the problems and all of that, it won't seem like a problem because we're relying on the answer. We're just relying on your love. Does that mean everything's going to go perfect and smooth? No. But does it matter? Does it matter? If we're like Paul in jail and writing notes to encourage the church, it doesn't matter. Because it's all about you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. I just want to pray uh, an encouraging word over everybody here that's listening to this message and here at the home. Father God, thank you that we are ch children of God. Thank you that you have predestined us, Father God. Thank you that the truth is in us, Father God. And though we may not be perfect, Christ in you, Christ in us is perfect. And we abide in you, you abide in us. So guess what? We are to walk in the light as you are in the light, Father God. Help us with that. Help us so that we could... Uh, 
fight off the doubts and fight off who we were and re be reminded of who we are in you, Lord Jesus, constantly, all day, every day. Let us be the epitome of love. Let us become love in all things so that, so that the world can see, wow, something different about this guy. Something different about this girl. And what it is, is Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. So every, the, the, the last thing, uh, I remember when the, the Lord was on the cross, he said, it said in the, in the Bible that we were the joy set before him. Let it be a reminder to us. When we're going through something, let him always be the joy set before us. And that's why he'll become our focus on our everything, not the issues, not the circumstances, not the problems. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you, Lord, for your life. Thank you, Lord, that you are the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Love you guys. Man, it was great. Uh, please share the message. If it impacted you, definitely share it because obviously if it impacted you, it'll impact others. And just be the light, man. Be the light. And I'm going to pass it over to my brother, Josh. Good stuff. We say it all the time, right? Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, I know, I believe with all my heart that you've been, you've been encouraged. I believe that you've been challenged. And uh, here at the house location, we're going to get ready to go and discuss the message, take a few minutes and discuss it. I want to encourage those of you that are online to do the same, to, uh, to discuss it. Maybe you got to discuss it with yourself, or maybe you can uh, talk with somebody about it. And some of the things, uh, what's that perspective? What perspective do you have? Uh, how, what does it mean to deny yourself? What does it mean to take yourself and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to deny me and I'm going to embrace Jesus Christ for my life. What does that look like for you? And so there again, we want to thank all of you uh, for being here today. We want to thank those of you that have joined us online. We want to encourage you to fill out that connect card, especially if it is your first time. If you haven't been with us, whether it's here or online, uh, go to livewirechurch.com, click on All Access Sundays and uh, fill out that connect card because we want to help you move forward. And whether we realize this or not, we need others to help us get to where we need to go. We can't get there ourselves. If you think about everything that, that we do in life, it's always, there's always people involved that are helping us. Whatever, if it's our career, if it's with our finances, if it's relationships, whatever it might be, it's always other people involved helping us move forward. And so we want to help you move forward. So again, fill out that connect card because we would love to connect with you and, uh, and help you in any way that we can. So thank you so much again for being with us. Again, we're going to go into our discussion here. I want to invite you to join us anytime uh, here on Sundays here at Livewire Church. Again, all the information at livewirechurch.com. God bless you. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next Sunday.